joint student resources page is a summary of all the resources for you in one place. Section 3 talks about the document library that I, I explained a minute ago, and it allows you to, to hot link to it. Section 4 talks about this mis mysterious two teachers how to move forward page. We're going to go there in a second. And Section 5 is the FAQ. So now let's go to the two teachers how to move forward page and tell me when you're there. So this document, this document is an instructionally designed bulleted walk through the entire program. We did not want to just give you the curriculum. We wanted to give you a recipe to walk through the program so that every time a particular curricular element, whether it is a web page or a document in the document library, is a hot link. So the first section saying that says navigating this website the first paragraph says, the first thing you need to do is read the whole page and the about SSEP page. Then in purple text it says, however, teachers need to concentrate on getting students moving on experiment design. So here is the key. All the information that specifically addresses the design of student experiments, and then it kind of lists that kind of information. And then it goes on to say, are all accessed through a careful read of the teacher and student resources page. The link label teacher resources in the top navigation banner. Think of that page as your Grand Central Station for SSEP experiment design in the classroom. One of its subpages is the page you are reading now. So this paragraph is reinforcing the notion that the teacher and student resources page is your main page for experiment facilitation in the classroom. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Yes. In section two, it says a proposed list of tasks and activities for SSEP launch and management in the classroom. In section A, it says to get up to speed with SSEP experiment design, a teacher should first read the teacher and student resources page. Then in section, and, it, and, and as directed, explore the links. In section B, it says, provide an overview of the SSEP program to your class. For example, the goal of community-wide engagement in real science and an understanding of the flight experiment design competition, a web page that you might want to project on a screen with an LCD projector, and all the blue text is a hot link. So as you walk through this entire page, it walks you through the program and links when necessary are there. In section D, it provides a bunch of links where, that we haven't looked at before. One says SSEP community profiles, another one says student experiments selected for flight. All of those indented links are on another website, and we'll get to that in a moment. But as you go and scroll down on this page, do you see section three, important advice to teachers in big lettering? But it says in this section, this is really important information in this section, it says that every one of your student teams needs, needs a professional researcher as advisor who is an expert in that experiment. So if you have a middle school team that wants to do planaria worm regeneration and wants to know what the role of gravity is, they must a planaria worm regeneration expert as an advisor. What you do not want to have are teachers trying to facilitate over a wide range of experiments where the students are coming up with the question to ask. The students are coming up with the experiment, so it's going to be lots of different experiments. You don't want to be the facilitator of all those experiments, and you're certainly not experts in those experiments. So the way to do this is using Google Scholar Search, and there's a link on this page to, and talk, it talks about how it's done. The idea is that these experts are not going to be local to you, and that's okay in the age of video conferencing and email. And so what they do is they would put, this team would put planaria worm regeneration in the search field in Google Scholar Search. And what will be returned are scholarly, peer-reviewed research articles on planaria worm regeneration. We are not asking your student team to read the paper, but to look on the top of page one, where the co-authors and their host institutions are listed. So if Dr. Jane Smith is a co-author on a planaria worm regeneration paper, and she's at Harvard, 
The students go to the Harvard website, they go to the staff directory, they look up Dr. Jane Smith's email address, and they send a very nice email to Dr. Smith asking if, they can, if she can be their advisor. And we even have a template for that email that can be customized team by team. So does everybody understand the power of, of getting the researcher research community involved in this? Yeah. Yes. Now, if we look at the top, I have to take you to one more place quickly. We've just explored flight opportunities, teacher resources, and the contact button is where you need to submit questions. You see the next button, the fourth button is community network website. You can click on that button, or do you also see the little banner underneath that says jump to SSCP community network site? Yeah. Yes. Click on that and tell me when you're there. We're here. Now you know that you're at a different website because in the banner you should see the Endeavor space, uh, 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 space shuttle against the blue earth. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. The website we came from provides all the resources to do the program. This website is dedicated to all the communities that have participated in this program, and this website is really, really important for you. If you scroll down to the bottom, do you see a map of the world? Yes? Yes. These are all the communities that have participated to date. And under the map, do you see a blue line of text with a plus sign next to it? Yes. Click on the plus sign. Do you see a very long list show up? Yes. This is mission by mission, all of the communities that have ever participated in this program. And everything in green are communities that have participated more than once. We have many communities on their 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth flight opportunity now. If you go, so you can see what communities have participated state by state. If you go to the very top of the page, do you see the button that says communities and local partners? Yes. Yes. If you hover over that, do you see all the missions show up? Mm -hmm. yes. Here, Mission by mission, you can read about every community that's participated. You can learn about where they are, how many students were engaged, what the grade level focus was, what schools, every school that's participated is named, the email addresses of all their leadership. That's what these community profiles are. If you hover over experiments selected for flight, do you see the missions show up? This is really important for you and your students. Every flight experiment ever flown, 281 of them for SSCP, is summarized on these pages. Your students have the ability to read a paragraph on every SSCP flight experiment. It is a great idea, it's a great place to get ideas for experiments. They could be, a student team might be like the young lady in one of our communities that went into her basement and saw mold growing on the wall and said, gee, I wonder if gravity affects the life cycle of mold, and that's how that experiment came into being. Or student teams can go and read about all the experiments, and there is no reason why they cannot do an experiment over again, because the work product that they're delivering is a formal proposal. Now a little summary. All they're getting here is a small summary of each experiment. The proposal has to make the case for why this is a good microgravity experiment with citations pointing to a bibliography. The proposal has to provide all the, how, the, how the experiment works and the procedures and the analysis. And so that is the work product and that's why we never ever give proposals to students because that would give them a roadmap to just submit somebody else's work product. So experiments selected for flight is where your students can explore experiments in the past and maybe change some experiments to try a different approach. If you hover over mission patches, do you see the missions show up underneath? Yes. Here your art and design teachers can look at every mission patch selected for flight and read about every competition that was conducted in the communities to see how the competition were done, make an idea for how you might want to run your competition. And the competition for Mission 14 is going to focus on the 50th anniversary of the Apollo landings on the moon, if you so choose. 
If you hover over scientific return and reporting, do you see the missions show up? Here, your students and you can watch a video of every student team presentation at the National Conference at the Smithsonian, Smithsonian to date. It is another great place to get an understanding for what an oral presentation at a conference is like, a real conference, by students as young as 10 years old standing in front of the Smithsonian Starburst logo doing a PowerPoint presentation on their research in space. And this is another great place for your student teams to get experiment ideas. And the In Our Own Words button is where you can read and watch videos about what this pros to community to students and to even parents. And the bottom row of navigation is, is very similar to what you saw at the other website. There is SSEP in the news, the national blog, the contact button, logos and banners. Now we'll link back to the main website and the two organizational sites. So does everybody understand how these websites work together? Yes. 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 So just summarizing here, I started out with a philosophical overview for what is the function of formal education to prepare our students for the real world and how we take real-world authentic experiences as project-based learning experiences into the pre-college classroom. I told you how this program works and how that grows organically that, from that philosophy. We walked through with me modeling best teaching practices and you having a stake in ownership in the story. I walked through the microgravity curriculum with what is microgravity, what is the cause of microgravity, why would you want to do science in a microgravity environment, and how would you facilitate microgravity experiment design in the classroom? And then I provided you an understanding of the navigation for the websites to show you what you need to concentrate on with regard to your role as facilitators of experiment design in the classroom. I think you now understand why I think it's really important for every community to have this time with the program director to provide a deep and broad understanding of SSEP and to reinforce the notion that all of you and all of, your, all of your students are now very much a part of America's space program. This is really very, this is very real. So does anybody have any final questions before we break? I have a few if, questions I'd like you just to touch on. I just don't want anybody to be afraid. So. When you talk about proposals, you're not talking about books. You're talking about there's a, a guide for writing a proposal. And I think I saw that you showed me a standard five pages or so. We're not talking about uh, fifth graders writing 40 pages or something. No, it's not fifth graders writing 40 pages. And when you go to the proposal guide, you have the passwords for both the mini laboratory operations page and the document library. And when you download the proposal guide, you will see what is called for. There are three set. There are actually two separate sections. Actually, there's three sections in the proposal. Um, and what we did is is we sent all of the community program leaders via the leadership list serve. I think it was yesterday, the day before, exemplar proposals, examples of proposals for selected flight experiments at the elementary level, at the middle level, and the high school level, so teachers can look at proposals and see what at least the flight experiment proposal looks like in terms of what students have provided. But it is absolutely vital that no teacher share any of those proposals with your students. So is there, does that answer the question? Yes. Okay. So then you get to see what a proposal looks like. And there are maximum word counts in the sections listed in the proposal guide. And often, the main body of the proposal at the elementary level runs like two to three pages. And I know that there's concern or, or care that has to be taken with using NASA in the advertising. And, and you sent some information about that, which we'll distribute. But could you just summarize that? Yeah, so, you know, as you probably would will realize that, you know, um, lawyers like to be very anal. You know, they, they, really, they really push regs very, very hard. And there is this field called commercial space now. 
It used to be that NASA was the only business in town in the United States launching rockets with the Air Force. But then SpaceX and Cygnus got involved and Elon Musk is launching rockets. Those are private rockets. It's the, it's the private sector. It's called commercial space flight. And so we had to, this is not a NASA program. NASA does not want to do this program. NASA does not want to fund this program. NASA has a basic budget that's been cut to the bones in education and they're do, just doing a baseline programming. When I wanted to create this program, I had to build it on the commercial space side this is a commercial space national STEM program. It is the first national STEM program done as a commercial space venture. We are pushing the trail, we're, we're blazing a trail here. And so we have to work with a commercial launch services provider that has what's called the Space Act Agreement with NASA to fly private payloads. And as part of that Space Act Agreement, NASA requires that all of the, the, the launch services provider and its customers recognize that this is not a NASA program. NASA does not and must not 